Playbook, the place to find a sports coach or mentor. All sports, all ages, all abilities. It's about you playing to your potential, whatever level that is. Visit playbook.coach to find a coach. Playbook is also the place to sign up as a coach if you have sporting expertise and you're keen to share that with others through coaching and mentoring. Everyone is welcome to coach. It's super flexible. You set your own prices, locations, and schedule. Head to playbook.coach to sign up. And we're back for another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast. As always, brought to you by the Oz American Aces. What a crazy week it's been uh, for me individually. My name's obviously Adam, of course, and on the line, as always, my best mate up there in Brisbane, Joshy Dunkley. How are we going, mate? I'm good, thanks, mate, and extra excited this week. We've actually brought on a new sponsor in Playbook, so um, we want to get around them straight off the top, don't we? Yes, we do. Playbook is something that we're both proud of proud to be a part of and we've both been a part of for quite a bit now so um yeah it's uh it's exciting it's something that uh you know when you first get into doing you know a podcast and whatnot you don't you just think about um doing it off your own back and having a good time and enjoying yourself but you obviously get to um you know if you have a bit of success maybe have some sponsors here and there so it's nice it's nice that um playbook are, are willing to jump on and help us out because um it's a great organization yeah and we've talked about that a lot over our you know, first 23, I think, episodes now. And um, Mm -hmm. we've talked about how we're heavily involved in Playbook. So it's great that we can join that partnership together now and and work together in, um, yeah, helping each other out. And for those that don't know and um, for the new supporters that haven't listened to the podcast in the past, it's all about, uh, you know, us athletes out there. It's a variety of different sports, um, being able to coach one-on-one team sessions, individual, however many it might be, um, to help the young kids out there and upcoming stars of our games um, to get better. So we love doing it, love giving up our time and uh, appreciate the support from Playbook. Could not agree more, mate. So we'll talk a little bit more about uh, a little bit of a Playbook uh, segment we have um, later on in the potty. But another thing that uh, is worth mentioning, um, Tommy. Tommy's actually looked after us and we're wearing the Oz American Aces uh Jumpers, which is really cool. Obviously, I didn't want to wear the black to share the same as yours. So, <laughs> loving these. These are look really. These are look really. These are looking really cool. So, and by the way, I've um, for what it's worth, it kind of looks like I'm moving out. Uh, there's nothing in the background. <laughs> Usually, I've got a um, like a Kobe Bryant uh, painting and a LeBron painting, but can't see it. Um, I might uh, I might take a photo a bit later and get um, Rado maybe to share it, but. Kimmy has done a magnificent job in setting up this as kind of like the basketball room. Got a little bit jealous because yours looks, you know, immaculate. You've got those beautiful shoes in the background. You've got, obviously got the Bulldogs uh, premiership um, jersey there. So I uh, I thought I'd hopefully, um, you know, try and make mine look half decent. Um, I know it's probably a little bit too late. You've just mentioned we're up to episode 23 and there's probably only four, four or five episodes to go. Hopefully you go the whole way. Um, but I'm going to try and make it look a little bit nicer next week and um, look after the back. So I haven't moved out. There's nothing going on. Um, I just thought I'd chuck that out there. You just need to flip your desk around, mate, and have it all in the background. That'd be cool. I saw it before you showed me before we uh, came on and it looks pretty impressive. No, I know. Kimmy's a, uh, a guru. There's no way I could have done that. Um, how's your week? How's your week anyway? Regardless, um, not outside of footy, how's your, how's your week been? What'd you get up to? Anything exciting? Uh, it's a good question. I've done a few actually different things that I hadn't planned. I actually went temp in bowling yesterday for the first time in a long time. And I you go? started off, started off, I knew you were going to ask that. So I was already going to start talking about it, but I started off quite average. But then, mate, I got like two or three strikes in a row and then I hit my straps, scored 150 around there. Is that pretty good? I think it is. Who did you, my best would probably be about 180, but that's all right. Who did you, um, oh. <laughs> Who did you go with? Did you go with Tipper? I went with Tipper and her sister. Yeah, it was good. It was good fun. Oh, nice. Um, well, I already know something that was extremely exciting for you that you've already forgotten to mention. But uh, you had you had a certain draft yesterday where you dressed up and your teammates dressed up. Would you want to? Can you tell us a little bit about what that was? Yeah, so we're doing the NFL draft as you want me to talk about because you can't wait to talk about <laughs> NFL yes. fantasy, but um. Yeah, so we had our dynasty draft and uh, last night we all got kitted up. We went to Charlie Cameron's house and 
there was 10 of us in the draft. Ashy and his brother were on FaceTime on the TV along with Darcy Fort because um, he couldn't make it. So we had them all on TV and then we were all sitting around a massive table and we did the draft. So it was good fun. We all got suited up and um, wore our best kit like we're, you know, the commissioner or doing, you know, the, the bosses of the club. So it was pretty cool, good fun to get it all done and, um, yeah, look forward to the season now. Yeah, I am uh, I was extremely jealous when you were snapping me. I love that. As you know, mate, I uh, one of my loves in this world is NFL fantasy. Um, just for my sake and the the few fans that we have that actually love NFL as well, what pick did you have and who would you take? I had pick four and I took Bijan Robinson. So I, I'm, I'm a bit nervous, to be honest, and we'll talk about it probably a bit later, but I'm just a little bit nervous because there's a lot of hype around this guy. And I'm not sure. I remember last year, like Cam Akers and Cam Akers going and, and then everyone had him in their team and then all of a sudden he just got nothing and had no respect. Um, I'm just yeah. nervous about I'm nervous. No, I, I, I can safely say it's a very good pick. I think Cam Akers is, yeah, that, that is one that probably hurts you. But do you remember the year before Clyde edwards alaire Do you remember it was his yes. first? Yeah, so he came out of college similar to Bijan Robinson and was taken in the, taken in the first like round of fantasy drafts and then two years later he's like the fourth string now at Kansas City so I know you're a little bit worried about that but mate you're laughing as soon as you sent that through to me oh I'm jealous I tried to sneak my way in there I tried to sneak my way into uh I'm, I know last week you mentioned that you needed some extra players I was like oh throw my hand up I might jump in there if that's okay <laughs> Ten, nine Bulldogs, yeah, well, uh, nine Brisbane players, and one Bulldogs player. So, yeah, well, I'm still in the doggies one, mate. So, I look forward <laughs> to that draft whenever that's happening. No, I am too. I um, that is happening. I think, I think next week we've got we're finalising everything, and we're obviously a part of um Tommy's Oz American Aces fantasy team as well, which is exciting because we get to uh, work yeah. together, which is extremely exciting. Cannot wait for that. Um, but uh, I probably should stop with that because I'm just going to keep talking NFL and I know uh, our listeners want to want to hear about footy and um, obviously my week and your week. We'll start with your week. Um, obviously played a, you know, played against a really good side, St. Kilda, who took a right up to you, um, you know, in terms of the score, you guys only won by two goals and I've seen a bit of the game, uh, a bit of the highlights and looked like they really took it up to you, but obviously you guys are uh, far too strong. And I must admit, still think extremely underrated, the Brisbane Lions. I mean, there's not much, you know, there hasn't been much talk around the Brisbane Lions here in Melbourne, which I guess is a good thing for you guys, but still I think extremely underrated who I think can, can go the whole way and, um, you know, I'll be supporting you, my friend. But how did you, you know, how did you see the game? Um, obviously nice to finish on a win and finish the regular season and now look forward to obviously a um, the second bit of the season, which is the finals. Yeah, it was it was a good win for us. I think, you know, like you said, a few people are writing us off, so taking a bit of inspiration out of that, to be honest, and and looking at, you know, just step by step, one game at a time. And uh, we had a good side in the Saints on the weekend who, you know, they, they play a different style, I feel. So it's harder to really, if you give them the ball, then to get it back off them, if you don't defend them well enough, like they can just chip their way around you and mm. through you and mm. score. Because they like to make the ground really big. And when I say that, I sort of mean like all their players spread the ground. Even their full forward is pretty much staying inside mm-hmm. 50. So it's really – it's trying to stretch your defense and then you can't cover all those gaps. And it's a different way of playing that, you know, not many of the other teams in the in the eight at the moment play that way. So um, it would be interesting to see, um, yeah, how it all transpires over the next little bit. But I thought they were really good. They were good around the source. We – we, we were pretty strong around the ball on the weekend, which was nice. And um, unfortunately, you know, didn't kick a, kick straight. That was our main thing. We kicked a lot of points. I think we kicked 19 points or something. So um, that part of our game was disappointing. But we did generate opportunities, which was awesome and defended pretty well, I thought, um, on the day. And yeah, so all in all, I thought it was a, a solid performance, albeit we probably should have uh, kicked away at some point when we were kicking – I think we keep one goal seven in the last quarter or something like that to to finish the game. So mm. disappointing we sort of couldn't get away from them. But at the same time, it's nice to be able to play in those close games to get that experience coming into finals. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that you'll able to play 
some good opposition, like the last couple of games for you. Um, you know, you know, when I say good opposition, every opposition is is clearly good, mm. but I mean teams that are competing for finals or playing finals. You really put you in good stead going forward. Um, what's the so what's the plan now for you? Obviously, you don't play for two weeks. Uh, you know, do you have a few days off or are you going to head away? What What are the plans for you and, and for the team? Yeah, so it's a little bit different to what I've experienced in the past. Um, we sort of had, we had Sunday, Monday off and then now we're going day on, day off. So we're going Tuesday training, Wednesday off, Thursday training, Friday off, Saturday training, Sunday off and then that'll lead us into a normal week next week. So it's a bit of a freshen up. Two days off post game was really nice. Just as I said, did a few different things in temping bowling and went shopping and just like things that I haven't normally done in the past. So, um, yeah, it's been good to have that freshen up, I guess, and leading into the rest of the week now, it's just going to be nice to, you know, get out and train with the boys. And it's really important for us. We talked about it today, like, because our VFL play a final this weekend, qualifying final against the Gold Coast. So mm-hmm. those boys that are playing in that, like they're still training and preparing for a final. So, um when we go into train, it's going to be at full intensity and we're going to make sure that the boys going down there to play the Suns are ready to go uh, and hopefully they can get the win down there. So uh, when you're in there, I feel like it's at the club I'm talking, it's definitely down to work. Um, there's no time for rest, but when we, we get a couple of extra days off this week to help us really refresh and you know get ourselves right for a big finals campaign, hopefully. Yeah, no doubt it'll be a big one. I got uh, full confidence in your mates. I will be supporting you, as I said. What well, has your body? How are you feeling now that the season's over? Obviously, you had a few niggles this year. I think the only or well, minor issue you had was your calf. Um, obviously, other stuff you have going on, you've been able to manage. But yeah, how is the the body feeling? And how much do you appreciate having a week off leading into finals? Yeah, my body's feeling all right. I've the calf stuff's probably lingered a little bit because I came back quite early from that. So, you know, talking to yourself and others um, that have done calves before, it's probably been one that knowing that I came back a little bit early, that it was always going to be probably until now that I could really get it right. So um, that's been one that I've been dealing with and my left ankle's lingering too. That's something that I heard against, I think it was Frio over there. And yeah, it's a bit of a pain to be honest at the moment, but as I said before, a bit of a rest this week helps to, you know, not really get that twisting and turning that you do um, in a game. Mm. Albeit, I think Saturday's session that we do will be a match simulation type session. So it's just a different thing when you're at training rather than a game. Um, so yeah, it'll be nice to freshen up the body a little bit. But other than that, I'll, you know, there's other little things, but they yeah they don't really hold you back at any point. You're holding back a little bit um, on uh, how you're really feeling because I've got no doubt you've got some. Some shitty injuries that uh, you obviously don't want to disclose because uh, we don't need any rival oppositions listening and knowing what it is. But <laughs> um, I've got no doubt you appreciate, you know, having having a week off. And um, I remember when we were playing in the two twenty one final series, we didn't actually have that week off. Remember, we went straight into the into the elimination final against Essen, and, and you know, then obviously last year playing final series, you appreciate actually being able to you know, rest for a bit and, and not having the rigors of um, bash and crash on the games on the weekend and then, you know, be, being able to go again. And, and you're in, obviously in a fortunate position where hopefully you guys win the first final and then get another week off and, and play in the prelim final. So it's exciting for you. Um, first time, I know I mentioned mentioned um, last week on the potty, but it's the first time you've finished top four. Yeah, I guess that has to mean That has to mean something for you. It's a little achievement that you've achieved. Yeah, it does. Definitely. I think, you know, always go into a year wanting to make top four and get that, um, or just get a, a home finals elite. Like that's the, the number one goal probably. But to make top four and get a second chance is what every team I think in the AFL wants every year. So to get that, it's my first time experiencing it. So um, really enjoying the, yeah, the moment and obviously looking back on the season, happy with the season that we had. But now we know, I think everyone knows that, you know, there's still this is now the pointy end, and it's time to get down to the the real stuff, like you said earlier. So, um, very excited, mate! Can't wait to get stuck into another finals series, and hopefully, it's a, a good one for us, one to remember. Yeah, mate, I'm uh, I'm very excited for you, and, and the fact that we're not there hurts. But as I said, I'll be watching you. Probably might sneak up to a f- few games up there in Queensland. That'd be nice. 
Yeah, no, nah, it'd be good, mate. But let's talk about you now. Obviously, a um, it's a it's a bit of a hard one because you the end of the year, like you had a good finish to the season, um, individually and collectively. Uh, played a ripping game against the Cats down in Geelong. Broke the however many year drought it was from um, winning a game down at GMHBA Stadium, and uh, and then to sit there and on Sunday and watch that game unfold. Like, talk us through. Firstly, talk us through the game, and then we'll talk about the rest after that. Yeah, always obviously a um, a good result. I felt like in the first half we were probably a little bit oh, what's the word? A little bit shaky. We were just um, kind of tentative with the way that we were playing. You can tell we wanted to, you know, express ourselves offensively, but we were just kind of. It's almost like, as I said, we're just tentative. We weren't. Um, free of mind and really taking the game on the way we know we can. So, you know, when it's a half time down, but we had a really good chat at half time about just freeing the shackles essentially and just um, expressing ourselves offensively because our defensive side was actually pretty good. We were defending really well um, and giving ourselves opportunities with the ball in hand. So um, after half time, I definitely felt like that's what we did. Um, you know, very pleased that Rory Lobb came in and, um, you know, in my opinion, was probably his most influential game he's had for us and really showed his capabilities and something in, in the ruck that is, really showed his capabilities and um, is something that I know is exciting for next season when we get back. Um, and then, you know, the way we were able to finish on top, yeah, very, very proud of the boys. Um, it'd been a pretty tough week for us, uh, you know, with the external pressure and, and scrutiny and, um, you know, and all the scrutiny was was clearly fair. We'd, we'd let ourselves down quite a bit the last couple of weeks. So, very pleased um, that we were able to win, you know, the way that we won and, and to win down in Geelong, um, I guess to break that hoodoo, if you want to call it. Haven't won there since 2004, I think it was maybe. It was, um, yeah, very, very pleased we were able to go out on a win. But then, you know, as you said, obviously we had to, um, you know, wait 24 hours to watch the Carlton Giants game. That was a tough one. Yeah, I was going to say how, because I'll watch the, the second half pretty much from the second quarter halfway through the second quarter onwards of your game and you could see the definite shift in momentum in that third quarter and then you guys obviously got the job done quite comfortably in the end. And then post-game, you could see the the feeling that you had. Like I feel like it was mm. a, an emotional win for you boys and, and the, the club as a whole. Um, but then for that all to be ripped away from you on Sunday, talk us through what you got up to on Sunday. Did you all watch it together? Um, what was it like post the, the Carlton GWS game or throughout it? Yeah, no, firstly, it was it was a great win. Like it was something that we can, can't can underestimate. I mean, obviously we didn't make finals, but, you know, you look, when you retire, you look at times where, you know, you look proudly on, you look back proudly on. It's something that we're all proud of. We are able to go down and, and beat Geelong in Geelong, which not many, you know, teams can do. And, yeah, I, I get they rested a few players, but they had, you know, plenty to play for with, Isaac Smith's last game, Sam Manigola's last game for Geelong. Um, obviously, playing in Geelong, it's very unique. The ground's really narrow and it's their ground they train and play on. It's very hard to beat them there. So, you were right. We we're extremely proud and, um, you know, very um, grateful we were able to win. Um, on the Sunday, we we all, all planned to get together at, um, you know, a Fitzroy, I think it was a Fitzroy pub. And, yeah, we, uh, we watched the game as a team and, um, had a couple quiet beers. We got the VFL boys um, preparing for. You mentioned finals. They're preparing for a finals this week, so they're all there as well. But on the waters, watching um, either way. So um, it started well. Obviously, the game started well. Carlton, um, you know, obviously uh, started really well. Charlie Kerno was up and about early, kicked the cut early, and then you know, I definitely, f- I could, I just had a feeling going in that, like you know, I've, I've obviously played for the Giants and. You know, they always play well in big games and um, I just had a feeling that they would, you know, play really well and give themselves a really good opportunity. And um, Steve Coniglio's 200th game and for what it's worth, he's a one of my favourite teammates that I've ever played with and, um, you know, I think he's a true champion of the GWS Giants footy club and will go down as a legend for that footy club for what he's done for them and um, I congratulate him on his 200th. But I just had a feeling that they were, you know, going to be prepared and ready to play and, and they were. And... I didn't want it to be the case, but yeah, it, the reality really sunk in about uh, five, five or six minutes to go in the third quarter when you could just tell the Giants were on top and um, they were playing some really good footy. Their their strengths were really shining, and 
Um, the start of the last, it looked pretty tough for Carlton to come back. And then I think the Giants kicked the first goal on the last. And that's kind of when we knew that our season was over, unfortunately. And um, yeah, we, we we essentially watched another five or 10 minutes and just turned it off and just stuck together, really. Just, um, you know, had a couple more beers together. And then, as I said, just VFL boys had to leave and got, got guys kind of did their own thing. Me personally, I, um, I was shattered, mate. I was devastated. I just went home. I went home to see... Kim and Georgie and um, told Georgie because she was awake, told her that there's no more footy for daddy, no more uh, Western Bulldogs games for the year ahead. And, um, you know, she uh, gave me a hug and could see that I was a little bit sad. So, um, yeah, it was a um, it was a it was a shitty way to go out. But, you know, can't blame anyone other than ourselves. And, um, you know, we let ourselves down in games that we shouldn't have. So, you know, Giants are thoroughly deserving of, of making the top eight. As Sydney are, who obviously snuck in as well. Saints, those teams that snuck in right at the end, they they thoroughly deserve to be there. Yeah, it's a, you've said that really well. I think now that it's all um, it's all done, you obviously move into the next phase of you know re, you know reflecting on the year, but then having your your exit meetings and um, team meetings. Is that what's taken place over the last couple of days? Yeah, yeah, it has. So we obviously, um, you know, because we were, we were planning both ways, but, um, you know, want to plan the positive way. So we we're planning for a normal training week ahead. But, um, you know, once that didn't come to fruition, I think Monday was planning for, for today and today being Tuesday and, and Wednesday for all the exits. So me individually, I had mine today, had all my uh, medical staff. I'm, um, I'm getting an ankle, I'm having a nerve like operation on my, um, clearly on my ankle. I've, uh, Expressed that my ankles hurt me quite a bit this year, and um, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm getting that, I'm getting something done down there in the next couple of weeks, so that'll set me back. No running or anything for for when uh, off seasons here or when the fantasy football's on at three in the morning. I won't be uh, running on the treadmill or anything. I might be doing a bike session or a cross trainer or whatever it is. But um, no, nah, I've got a um, got an ankle op. Obviously, spoke to. Spoke to um, Bevo and and whatnot, and just yeah, just put a plan into place for the upcoming off season slash preseason. But you know, I was able to reflect a little bit on um, my own individual season, and um, you know, I had some um, you know, a good conversation with Bevo and Lady, who who ladies obviously um, our midfield coach Webby as well. But Webby's um, moving on, moving back home with his um, family, but he worked closer with him as well. And yeah, it was nice to um, you know hear some kind words. It was. You know, it's hard to reflect on yourself individually when you don't necessarily have team success, which is, you know, that's all I want. I mean, you obviously you you probably know me better than anybody with you know, the same as Kimmy, and, and you both would know that's all I want. All I want to do is win, and when we don't win, I ride the roller coaster of emotions and um, probably look past, you know, I guess my my own individual game and whatnot because I feel like I I let myself down or the team down because we're not winning. So. Um, to actually sit back today and chat with Bevo about just my season um, as a whole and the fact that it was probably consistently one of my best seasons that I've had and, um, you know, considering the physical um, struggles that I had throughout the year, it's it was nice. And, you know, it keeps me really optimistic that going forward, you know, having a really good off-season and pre-season that, um, you know, I can, um, you know, hopefully hit the ground running come pre-season time and, yeah, just just keep holding a high standard and helping drive this group forward because you know definitely feel like we've got the right mix, the right group of guys. There's obviously a lot of things to you know still happen now and um, you know day one of preseason, but yeah, already really looking forward to um, getting back and and hopefully yeah going a lot better than what we did this season for next season. Yeah, I think all our fans would agree, mate. That um, and me personally, I think you've had a an outstanding year and disappointing that it's not continuing on through the finals but I think you should ha- hold your head up really high because you were you had an f- unbelievable year despite you know missing a couple of games you still hit the ground running when you came back from those games and didn't let it affect you so hold your head up high mate I'm I'm giving you some love but I'm sure the rest of our supporters out there would too no I appreciate that mate it's um it's always nice even after the after the uh, you know potty last week, where there was a bit of heat on us and talking about our fans, and um, you know, understand understandably they ride the waves with us and show a lot of emotion. But the amount of outpouring of love that we received from that it was something that I appreciate. So no, I thank you, mate. Um, anything else regarding us before we get into other footy stuff? Because there's plenty to talk about. Uh, nah, let's let's move on. Let's move on. 
Oh, we'll, we'll get to the first um, talking point, the All-Australian team, or squad, I should say. <laughs> uh, yeah, it um, obviously came out yesterday and there was some notable um, absentees for mine that probably should have been in there. And, you know, I don't, I don't underestimate how hard it would be for the selectors to select some players. I get it. And every single player in that 40-man squad is deserved of it, and I congratulate them. It's going to be a hard team to pick. Um, but there's definitely some players, in my opinion, that uh, that missed out that should be there. I'm going to give some love, first and foremost, to yourself. I think unbiased aside, I, nah, unbiased aside, um, take away all the biasy. You, you played in a team that has come second, has almost won – the same amount of games as Collingwood. You're a part of a, a midfield group that is one of the best midfield groups in the comp. To your own admission, you think your last three to four weeks or whatever hasn't been as um, influential as your first, I don't know, 15, but you can't underestimate how good your first 15 were. So I was very surprised when I didn't see that you weren't in the All-Australian squad. I thought you were definitely going to be in the squad. Um so I was a little bit disappointed for you. There's a couple others, but um, that's my first initial uh, feeling. <laughs> what do you have to say to that? Uh, to be honest, I, I was not expecting to be in the squad. Um, last year might have been a different story because I played all 23 games and you know thought that I had a, a, a... Yeah, I won the best and fairest, but didn't know that prior to the squad coming out. But I didn't even get a look in last year and... Um, like I'd kick the my most goals ever in a season, you know. It was I thought it was one of my best years of, of footy and played every game, and I, I still didn't get a look in. So, mate, for me, I'm gonna have to play above and beyond to make that team. That's for sure. <laughs> I believe players have to. It's almost like the Brownlow Medal, where players get votes in games, and this is another talking point for us. Players get votes in games when their team loses by, you know, forty or fifty points. I think the All Australian, which which Fortisworth, I don't think is right. I guess because I believe you can't, like you can't vote for a player to be the best player on the ground when they've lost by fifty points. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Or am I the only yeah, one? Yeah, I agree that? with you. No, no, no. I agree with you. I think it's got to be. Yeah, you've got to at least be within a couple of goals to be best on ground yeah. for in a in an AFL game. Yeah. Well, what I was getting to is, I think the All Australian side squad at least, has to be reflective of ladder positioning and where you finish and, you know, how many games you've won. It's similar to the, like I look at the basketball, um, all NBA teams and I look at the MVP of the basketball in the NBA and, and the um, NFL is the same. Like NRL is the same as well. It's almost reflective of how the team's gone and there can be players who have, you know, Full like second last or last whatever it may be who can make the team guys like Nick Lucky and, and um, Oscar Allen I think made the squad as well who were who were deserving like Nick Lucky kicked seventy goals like you have to reward that Oscar Allen was a was a just a beacon down there for him and it was unbelievable every single week but I feel like you've got to reward the teams more who finish higher you know I look at like when Geelong were powerhouse they had like nine, you know, nine players in the squad and stuff like that. Hawthorne, when they were a powerhouse those years ago. So, yeah, it baffles me a little bit. Yeah, I think I think times have changed a little bit and I'll, I'll go into what I think I, it needs to happen. I, I personally don't think that people in the media should be on the panel for the, the All-Australian team. And I reckon I was talking to you about this yesterday or one of the other days. I think it should be guys that have played the game that are watching the game a lot, like it maybe should be done at the start of the year, right? These are the guys, like someone like, um, uh, like Dane Swan. Like, yes, he might be Collingwood biased, but he should be. He's not in the media. He's not because I feel like media they can have favourites. Like for me to sit here and I'd yeah, be like, sure. I think you should be. I think you should be in the All Australian team because you've had one of your career best seasons, and I strongly believe you should have been in the squad. But then mm. others would have different opinions. So mm. I, I just no, think I that there shouldn't be any kind of favoritism 
in it. Because media, I feel, have their favourites that always, you know, they talk about on TV. You know, if you watch the dogs and you're dominating, but they talk about Bonty. Like, that's just what happens. Mm. And I feel like that happens with a lot of teams. Well, I think, yeah, I think definitely, well, you mentioned that. I think that has had a massive say on a guy like Tim Taranto. I mean, yeah. How how is a player? This is this is another one for me. How is a player who is probably more than likely going to finish top five in the Brownlow, who has come to a footy club, who is one of the biggest clubs in the land, and mm. you know you can just see he competes hard every single week, um, works his backside off, who's had an incredible first season, not in the All Australian squad, mm. squad that is. And do you think? There was talk about it about round 10 or 11 where um, it was mentioned in the media that he was not a top 150 player or whatever it is or something like that. Do you think yeah. that has impacted the decision come the end of the year? 100% because they they all look at the stats and the numbers mm-hmm. these days. It, that's where it's changed a lot. Like back in the day when you were talking about Geelong having eight or so in the squad or Hawthorne having six or seven, that was because – we weren't looking so much at numbers. It was more about, righto, I've watched that game of football. He's the best on ground. And I think he's one of the, been, he's been one of the most influential players for this team on this night or for this season. So um, I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. And I just think that, yeah, that like what I said, I, I feel like that if media personnel are involved in it, then they can they can change the whole dynamic, I guess, of it all. I agree. And I'm, having a, I'm, not, I'm not having a go. I'm not having a go at those people. I'm just saying, like, I just no, feel like for it to be fair and reasonable, yeah. I think that, that maybe they should look outside of the media, the guys that are in the media, and give it some ownership to some other people that have played the game before or watched the game for a long period of time, just to just have a completely different view on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't envy those guys that have to be in that position, like selecting a team. No that, that would be. That would be unbelievably hard. And as we've just said, like, there's not one person in that 40 man squad I don't think deserves to be there. They all deserve to be there. They're all, mm. you know, all had an incredible year individually. It's just, yeah, there's some players that missed out who I think probably should have been there. And, you know, that's not up for me to, you know, who's in, who's out. Um, you mentioned the, the stat side of things. It, it doesn't, it intrigues me a little bit because I always use Tom Liberatore as a perfect example. So Tom Libba is one of the best players I've ever played with. Probably, probably the best hands I've ever come across. Um, and you know, if contested possessions, uh, like a lot of the in and under stuff, stats like AFL player ratings, that's only really new. Um, uh, clearances, which wasn't always a stat, it's only really been in the two thousand and I'd say two thousand and ten onwards maybe before that, do you reckon he would he would have received the amount of praise this year if it wasn't for that? So what I'm saying is it's it's a shame that it takes stats to realize how good Libra is because my belief is if there was no contested possession or if there was no clearance or especially AFL play ratings, that's changed a lot of people's opinions. He wouldn't be getting applauded for what he does because he's done this the way he's played, he's done. He does it every year, but it's only yeah. really taken till now where the stats are so in depth for people to realize how good he is because he's the number yeah. three ranked AFL player rated. Because I don't know last year or the year before they didn't have player ratings. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, why does it take stats to realize how good Liber is? Like, he's the perfect yeah. example. And I reckon a guy like Ben Cunnington would have been the exact same. You know, this guy extremely underrated for a long time, but. He did a lot of the hard in in and under stuff. Not none of the you know the sexy getting the ball on the outside, taking bounces, kicking goals. Like, yeah. So the stat side of things, I definitely agree with you. Yeah, I yeah couldn't agree more. I, I feel like Liver's probably had a you know if he's hasn't if this is his best year, I reckon he's had very similar years to this over the last mm. five or six years. So mm. it's just that the the stats are there and the media have got a hold of it and they've blown it up and now they're talking about it and he's probably. Making the team now, which I th- I, des- I think he deservedly he is does. and makes yeah. it because he's been unbelievable. But 
yeah, it just backs up our our opinions. I uh, I really, and for what it's worth, I hope he does. I'm. Uh, it'll be an absolute shame if Liber were to retire in years to come and never make an All Australian team because I I I know you think the same, but he's one of the best players mm. that I've ever played with. Unbelievably good. Same as um, obviously Timmy English and Bonte from my side who made it, and I know you had. Was it uh, Harry Andrews, Charlie Cameron? Harris Andrews. Lockie Neal? Yep, Charlie. Knock, Lockie Neal and Joe Danaher. So hopefully a um, couple, of, couple of those boys get in there too. But yeah. um, we'll wait and see tomorrow night. I could see, I could actually probably see all four of them making it. But another thing about stats, I just wanted to bring one more thing up. I just want to hear what you think. Do you think a kick-in should be a stat, should be a disposal? <laughs> no. I think it should be. I think it should be a stat. Like, if you go into your, say, you're looking at someone's stats and you click on their profile, and it's got twenty disposals, ten kick-ins, and that gives you like ten. It's separate. It's not in your actual disposal count because it's not. I don't think it should be actually a a genuine stat because you're just getting a free, mm. free kick every time. Yeah, no, you? I, I agree because oh, uh, I'm with her. But only only because it's. You know, you can look at a guy's whole game and they've essentially had – and we're talking about stats because media personnel and whatnot love stats. Yeah. It's all about stats. You could have 15 disposals, but your opposition team's kicked 10 points and you've taken 10 kickouts. And tell me right now, what player doesn't usually step out of the goal square? I can't really think of someone. Like Tom Stewart, he doesn't – he's very good. He gets the ball and just kicks it. Doesn't To me, it doesn't look like he's stepping out of the goal square. But like most players, step out of the goal square because you know they're going to get a kick. So, Someone said to me one day, I, I can't remember if it was like, if you stay inside the goal square, that's a stat. So that'll count as a stat. I wonder how many blokes would now stay inside the goal square if you change the rule and said, <laughs> oh, okay, if you stay inside one. the goal square, you yeah. can get a kick to your name. <laughs> but if you don't, we'll see what if it flips the script a little bit. That is great. I'd love to um, love to see it. But no, nah, it's an interesting one. And the only reason we say it is because stats is so so prominent nowadays in, in our sport and it's so driven by um, the media, as you said. It has such an impact on, on everyone. So, yeah, a couple. If you, any other any – other, um, I didn't ask you. Is there any All-Australian players you think weren't there that should have been there? Yeah, yourself. I thought you should have been in there. Career best this season. Guy. Not at all, mate. Disregard um, me. Think anyone on top of your mind? Sam Taylor, GWS oh, Giants. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, do you think – that's another one. Do you, that's another one. Do you think – what do you think about games played? Do you think there has to be a certain amount of games played? Because Sam yeah, Taylor's that's, clearly that's gonna... missed. He's clearly missed because of games. And same as Max Gorn. Yeah, but then they've got guys in the squad that have missed games that – so I personally, I think that you should have to play – say like a minimum of 20 games for the year to make the squad. Like I don't think you should be able to miss, you know, half a dozen to 10 games and still make it. That's pretty, um, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. No, it's another interesting one. There's always, there's always talking points around, you know, all Australians and oh, yeah. metal and whatnot. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see the team when we do get to see it. It will be, mate. Is there anything um, other than uh, the all Australian stuff that you want to talk about? I've got, I've got one off the top of my head. It's uh, the Mad Monday costumes at Geelong. What are oh, your yeah. thoughts on that? Oh, well, clear, the clear winner was Isaac Smith, Cam Guthrie, and Paddy Dangerfield. <laughs> was it Dangerfield? Hawkins. It was Tommy Hawkins. Yeah, was Thanks, Prado, for correcting us. <laughs> Thanks, Prado. Um, um, <laughs> that was clearly that was the clear winner. That's great. Love that one. Yeah. Would you? So if you're the Crows, are you taking a bit of offense to that or are you saying play on? It's all good. I think because of the ind- the individuals involved, no, you don't take offense. Not at all. Yeah. Isaac Smith's I clearly reckon- a joke star. He's clearly a joke yeah. star and it's all tongue in cheek. Yeah. So no, I wouldn't take it. What do you reckon? Do you take offense? I don't know. They probably look at it and be like, still spewing. Because, mate, if you were the Crows, if I was at the Crows, I'll be – so angry right now because and if they the, and they yeah a, they were in yep they were they in. were in they're, they're in so I'm like if I was at the crow still and I saw that I'd be like geez these boys are taking the piss out of us mm. um, so if you're a, a crow's player are you are you targeting 
Geelong next year or are you going to go find where Isaac Smith is playing his footy and go down to that game and, <laughs> you know, target that game? You know me, mate. I keep receipts for everything. No, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> um, no, nah, I, I, uh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. No, I um, I thought that was good. I love how Geelong really get into it and I love how the – it's like the city of Geelong know what's happening and they get their local media down there and, yeah, they, they really get around it. It's great. I love how they do it. Never – Never, never misses the Mad Mondays at Geelong. No, they don't. I wish um, all clubs were like that because it'd be pretty, pretty funny to have like a sort of co- mini competition for who has the best Mad Monday. Um, speaking of Mad uh, Mondays, I, are you having a Mad Monday? Oh, I reckon we will, but it's as you mentioned before, we've we've got our VFL boys still going. So yeah, oh. we're we're looking really, you know, I'm very very optimistic about our our boys. We've won ten games in a row. Um, we've got some quality players playing down um, in the VFL who are obviously AFL caliber players. Guys like Caden Crozier and Tim O'Brien, Sam Darcy comes back this week. Um, yeah, a lot of players who, yeah, who are motivated to to help the boys win. So we've got an elimination final this Saturday at Box Hill against um, Casey. So should be a good game. Really looking forward to um, going down to support the boys. Can't wait for it. But no, to answer your question, boys- I reckon. We'll, I reckon we'll have it a, a big joint one once the boys are done. Yeah, and the boys they will. So they, what do they do now? Do they continue to train during the day, mm. or do they train at night with the VFL group? What happens there? Nah, I think I think they're incorporating a bit of both. Not not entirely sure. Um, they're trying to make it easy for both. You know, because obviously there's VFL listed boys playing, but I think they're trying to make it where they incorporate both of them and. Yeah, and have a crack. I mean, it's exciting. It's exciting for the footy club because I think, uh, I think, uh, sustained success um, is reflective a lot of the times of the whole program, not just the AFL program. And you know, mm-hmm. you guys are obviously playing finals footy, and your VFL side top four finish. You know, our VFL boys have have been really, really good all year, and. We run a great program down there in the VFL with Stuart Edge is our coach, Travi Varco, Steph Martin, Jamie Maddox, these guys really helping out and pushing the program, which is good. It's good for, you know, our young guys coming through. And if you're a Western Bulldogs fan, and there's a lot listening to our potty, go down and make sure you have a have a uh, have a watch on Saturday, twelve o'clock at Box Hill. It's gonna be a good game. Looking forward to seeing how the VFL unfolds this week. Um, moving on to our new segment, mate. We talked about playbook off the top. We are going to run a new segment, Playbook Play of the Week. Let's get around it. What have you thought of for the Playbook Play of the Week? I know we worded you up uh, (laughs) pre-podcast episode. What do you mean? I'm doing it right now off the top of my head. (laughs) What have you got, mate? What have you got for us for the Playbook Play of the Week? Uh, I'm going to expand it a little bit throughout the week. So it's not just going to be footy specific, but I'm going to start with footy Obviously, this week, because why wouldn't you? We obviously play footy. We're AFL players. So from here on out, there's going to be different sports. But my player of the week is Luke Shuey's goal. So obviously, Luke Shuey's retiring. Um, You know, one of the great players that I've played against. He's a West Coast Eagles champion, absolute champion, Norm Smith medalist, um, best and fairest there. I don't think he was ever all Australian. Very stiff. He's one of those players that's missed out. But um, I just think his goal that he kicked – it was very trademark like of Luke Shuey. He he I think he got a handball receive, broke the paint, kicked it on his left foot. He was as good a left foot kick as he was right foot, straight through the guts, and had a great celebration. So um that's my player of the week for this week. What about yours, mate? I like it. Your playbook player of the week. Uh my playbook player of the week. I'm gonna go to Saturday night because I I didn't watch a heap of footy on the weekend other than the a couple of the Sunday games, but I watched your second half, like I said earlier. And I just saw you, I think it was second, was it the second quarter when you uh, you just wheeled yourself on the contest and you kicked that snap out of the stoppage um, third quarter? Yeah, third quarter, mate. Third quarter. Yeah, I thought it was third <laughs> quarter. Um, but yeah, I just I reckon that was one of my plays of the week, playbook play of the week, because, you know, it was in a big moment when you needed to stand up and, you know, season on the line kind of stuff, you were probably, I think you might have been down at the time and... Um, setting the standard for your teammates. And I just thought it'd be fitting, mate, to give you my Playbook Play of the Week because obviously we do the podcast together. We've just announced a new partnership with Playbook for the final four episodes of the year. And I thought, why not give it to you? 
<laughs> I really appreciate that, mate. Playbook Player of the Week. I feel like uh, I've let our listeners down by not voting for you as the uh, the Playbook Player of the Week. But I haven't. Um, I wasn't. Uh, unfortunate. I wasn't able to watch your game, so I would have been able to pick something out and and get run with something there. But um, I'll be able to squeeze you in. You know, within the next four weeks. Don't worry. So um, I appreciate that, mate. The uh, the inaugural playbook play of the week, which is exciting, as you said, it's um it's going to be a segment for us going forward, which we're which we're excited about. But it doesn't have to yep. be footy specific. If you've got anything, yep. you know, in two weeks' time, mate, the NFL starts could be a playbook play of the week <laughs> in the NFL, which we're all excited about. Um, Absolutely, so I, I think it's that. I think it's ten days now, isn't it? Ten days. Uh it's about yeah, it's about ten days, thirteen hours, forty eight seconds, <laughs> and no, I'm joking. It's uh, next <laughs> next uh, Friday, I think, is the first game, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to um, – you did this last week, but I'm doing it this week. I'm going to throw that over the camera. You can't see my face. But that's the uh, Winter Vintage uh, Instagram page that has given you and I both um, some cool apparel. This is the uh, this is an old-school Western Bulldogs T-shirt, essentially, and uh, it's really cool. I really like it. So thank you so much for sending that to me. I know you got your Brisbane one last week, so – I, uh, I'll be wearing that, um, you know, a lot. I think it's really cool. I reckon there'll be a lot of boys jealous at the club, guys like Cody Waitman and um, and those real uh, – what kind of trend would you – what kind of fashion would you call it? Like, I don't even know. Vintage. Like, the the vintage. baggy – yeah, vintage. I swear – Oversized. I swear, I swear there's a new kind of fashion all the time. Like, I look at some of the young boys come in now, like Charlie Clark and – even Cody Waitman, Jamara, these guys, they just wear clothes that I probably wouldn't wear. Is it a sign that I'm just getting old? Oh, potentially, but <laughs> I've given you all your style, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, you have, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a couple more questions from last week that I just thought were really cool to ask uh, that I wanted to keep asking, um, but we didn't have enough time. So if you don't mind finishing on a uh, couple of cool questions. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. That's that. Thanks, Perfectly mate. fine with me, mate. This is from uh, Tyler.herd.02. <laughs> Do you think you've drifted since playing for different clubs? <laughs> uh, question, Do I think Joshi? I've drifted, drifted in uh, form? Is that what he's saying? Oh, he drifted from me, mate. Oh, I thought he was drifting in form. Um, no, no, come on, no, drifted. Do you think you and I have drifted apart? Oh, definitely not, definitely not. I feel like we we still get together once a week for the Ads and Dunks podcast. Um, I think it's great that we can still do that. And mate, I sit here right now, and I feel like I'm in the same room as you. It's actually quite cool. Um, <laughs> so probably no, I don't think we've drifted. No, I don't think we've drifted apart. I used to get a bit sick here, to be honest, but now I'm um, <laughs> far and far enough away that it. That I feel like we can, uh, you know, when we want to speak to each other, we just pick up the phone or get on the potty and and see each other on live TV. So it's good. It's good. I, I'm looking forward to catching up with you though at the end of the season. And yeah, what are you going to do when I'm up there and I'm at your house every day and trying to annoy you? Well, we'll be able to do a potty here, mate. How good? We'll set it up in yes, this room. Yes, we will. I'll get yes, you. Will. I'll get you some um some Lions merch to uh, wear to the finals games for us to support us oh, all the way. Hopefully. I'll have a cheeky beer in hand too. I'll be sitting with the family, with the Dunkley clan. I'll be uh, supporting you guys. A um, couple more questions. Before you move on, I just wanted Am to- Am I answering? Yeah, yeah. I've got a question for you that a lot of people are talking about at the moment. This Queensland move, we want to clear that up on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. Uh, I feel like I've answered the same question for the last five years. What year? We're 2023. I reckon this first popped up in 2019. So no, the answer is no. <laughs> we got to we got to remember, it wasn't my choice to leave Collingwood. You know, I didn't want to leave yeah, the Pies, yeah. obviously, and we all know that's clear. So why would I want to leave? It? Why would I want to leave, mate? My uh, this is where I want to play. I uh, I love the footy boys here. I am very um optimistic about our group and what we can achieve. I do want to play a hundred games for a footy club as well. That'd be nice. Or well, I wasn't. Mm. I haven't been able to play a hundred games for. For any team, and as you know, you get your name in the locker if you win a premiership or play hundred games, and you know I want to uh, I want to do that here. So 
don't worry, mate. Give it another give it another twelve months, and I reckon the same question is going to be asked because it, <laughs> it seems to be asked. You need to get a hundred games because then we can uh, father son can come into action too. So they, you know, if we both have boys, we could um, potentially they could play together. So that'd be pretty cool. Imagine that, and imagine um, imagine uh, the competitiveness with them. <laughs> oh, it'd be double the time as much as what we have. Yeah, it'd be funny, but no, I love the footy club. The Bulldogs is where I want to be. Uh, this is from Rory McCarthy. This is a good one. So, would you rather play 50 AFL games and win a flag or 350 games and never even make a final? Oh, probably win a flag. 50 games and win a flag. Yep. So, hands down, that's my answer. I think the younger me, when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, would have said, 350 games, but no. Nah. Win a flag. That's all I want to do, mate. Win a flag. You've already done that. So you can uh you can um you can uh, do whatever you want, really, because you've won a flag. <laughs> <laughs> Connor Betts underscore. Do you guys currently wear any smart watches to track your fitness running? And I'm gonna no no, uh, I'm gonna ask Joshy for Obviously not now because it's different in season. We've got GPS. We've got everything. This is more for pre-season, off-season stuff. Yeah, so it's a good question. I For pre-season, off-season, definitely I like to wear a watch because it sort of gives you an idea around what you're doing every day and you can track, you know, obviously your activity and your intake with your food and stuff that you eat because you're not training as much. So you want to know roughly – Whereabouts you sit in terms of intake and, and outgoings of whatever you you're expending out there in the environment, but um, as soon as it comes to in season and like as soon as we go back to training, I rip mine off straight away because it does my head in. Sometimes I'm like, oh, if I don't wear it at training and I've I've seen that I have you know haven't done much that day and the watch is like stand mm. stand stand or whatever it says, <laughs> <laughs> it uh, gets on my nerves a little bit, so I rip it off straight away. Oh, that makes me laugh. No, I, I wear it all the time. I love it. I love it. So I uh, I track my calories on there, as I always do. Yeah, and it doesn't do change for it. me in season. Yep, doesn't change for me in season. So I train with it in season, even main days. But I just take it off when we've got tackling and handball club and whatnot. So I don't uh, wear it then. But yeah, I love wearing it. Um, and I've got one more question for you. And it has to finish with an NBA one. Mate, there's so many good questions here that I just we should need to do a special episode. Maybe where we go, maybe we can do a um Instagram live episode, the ads and dunks, when I'm up there in uh when I'm up there in Queensland during the off season to uh, do one with you. We should do it because there's that many good questions. But this is this is I'm going to finish on an NBA one because you actually haven't told me. I don't think you've I've asked you this. So this is from Rec underscore Amos. I think that's how you pronounce it. Predictions for this NFL season: Super Bowl champs, MVP, Rookie of the Year. Oh, it's an, not NF. It's not NBA. It's NFL. NFL. Sorry. Um. So, Premier. What'd you say? Super Bowl. Go. We'll go Rookie of the Year first. Who's your Rookie of the Year? Oh, I've seen a smooth mover. Zay Flowers. Someone Jeez, like that. You maybe. are really going out there, even though there's Bajan yeah. Robinson or. Jimmy Gibbs, yeah. but no, I don't like it. I, I mean, I don't mind I'm, it. Yeah, I'm going for Zay Flowers. I've seen some good vision of him, just moving real nice and potentially think that – I actually picked him up last night in my draft, so hopefully he goes all right. Oh, okay. So that's why you're doing it because you want fantasy points. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, nice. Who's your MVP? Uh, oh, it's hard to go past Mahomes every year. I think he's involved. I feel like he's just going to do it again. So he's your pick. Patty Mahomes yep. is your pick. Yep. Okay, and your Super Bowl champs. Super Bowl champs, I'm going for the 49ers this year. Okay, nice. Well, there you go. You've heard it here. Can't wait to uh, see how we go in our first episode next season when we know the NFL uh, results. Yeah, what's yours? you got to give us yours now. Yeah, Rookie of the Year, I'm going uh, Bryce Young for the Carolina Panthers quarterback. My MVP, Justin Herbert. I think he's going to win the MVP. And... Uh, it uh, coincidentally falls with the Super Bowl champs. I think the Chargers are going to win. They're my pick, the really? Chargers. Mm-hmm. They're my pick. I think defensively they can't get any better. I just think last year offensively they let themselves down a little bit only because 
injuries. Keenan Allen was a little bit injured. Justin Herbert broke his mm. ribs in the first week and was wasn't the same. So there are they're my three predictions. I like it. I like it. Any more questions you got for us, mate? Oh, mate, I could spend another half an hour <laughs> asking questions, but uh, no, nah, I don't want. I don't want to leave it all in this episode we're going to do a uh i'll keep asking them throughout the weeks and uh, as i said let's do this instagram live now that i've mate i've got that much free time i don't even know what to do <laughs> and doing nothing it's so. a bit weird isn't it when you when you finish and everything gets ripped away from you it's because we're so used to oh. following schedules and that all the time it's and you mm. hear a lot of that actually retirees when they finish out of the game they walk out the door they say you know talk to the group walk out the door and then all of a sudden it's like what do i do now Yep. And and that's not to say I've don't you know, I've done a lot of stuff in terms of what I want to do post footy, but that's mm. more for when I'm retired. So Yeah, yeah. Now when I'm just waiting for the off season, pre season, there's just literally nothing to do. Like you as you said, you follow a schedule and I'll just gotta try and fill in some time. As I said, next week I'm gonna make a promise to uh to all our Oz American Aces, Ads and Dunks fans out there. I'm gonna have a cool little design on the back of the wall there, so it's going to hopefully look pretty cool. Oh, we look forward to seeing it, mate. All the ones that uh, tune in and watch on the YouTube channel. But we'll wrap it up there. Is there anything else before we go that you've uh, that you got for us? No, I would say good luck for this week, but I don't have to. I'll wait for next week. I um I can't wait to see you get into it, but I cannot wait for next week's episode already to preview the finals that'll be happening in that following week, and most importantly, to be previewing the NFL. <laughs> No, we look forward to it. Um, Thanks again, everyone, for listening to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast exclusively brought to you by the Oz American Aces. And once again, welcoming our new sponsor on board for the last four episodes in Playbook. And thank you to them for all their support. So thanks, everyone. Look forward to next week, as Adzi said, and we'll see you all soon.